Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Alisa Ewan, and I'm the Assistant Director of Alumni Relations at Teachers College. And I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today for the Alumni Career Development Webinar Series featuring Linda Evans, formerly known as Linda Flores. The webinar series covers a range of career topics and includes speakers from a variety of backgrounds. The series is co-sponsored by the Teachers College Office of Career Education and Professional Development and the Office of Alumni Relations. Videos of past webinars are available on our website at www.tc.edu slash alumni slash career webinars. Today, Linda presents personal branding, consciously enhancing what you already have. Linda Evans is a proud TC alumna who earned her MA in psychological counseling in 2016 and now resides in Orem, Utah. Her passion and profession is in higher education and career development. She has worked as a career counselor at Columbia and is currently the career director of 2800 Humanities and Social Science students at Brigham Young University, where she received a BA in American Studies and a minor in ballroom dance. Immediately after earning her undergraduate degree in 2011, she started her own career coaching business called Launch by Linda, through which she offers virtual services for clients in all stages of life, particularly career changers. Um, so before we begin, I just wanted to let you know that if you have any technical difficulties or issues with your audio, please feel free to chat me directly. And in this um, webinar, we do have a handout to share with everyone. So on the side, you should see a handout um, drop down um, and a personal branding worksheet. Please feel free to take the time to download right now because we will be utilizing this handout throughout our webinar. And uh, without further ado, here's Linda Evans. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me in this webinar. I'm excited to talk about one of my passion areas, which is personal branding, helping people enhance what they already have. And as Elisa mentioned, my titles are on this first slide. I'm a full-time career director at Brigham Young University over students in humanities and social sciences. And I'm also a career coach on the side for my business launched by Linda. And as also uh, Lisa said, please download the handout if you can. It's in PDF form, so it'd be best if you could print it and write on it. Or if you can't uh, have access to a printer right now, just take notes as we go. And I'll pause intermittently for you to stop, reflect, and write because that is the best way to build your personal brand is to actually think it through and write it down and then go through different drafts. So we'll get started. First, I would just like to know who is in the audience. We'll do a quick poll of what industry you work in. So Lisa, we'll go ahead and administer that. Okay, really interesting. So we have more than half in education, 6% social services, 11 in health, 11 in business, and nine other. And I wish we had uh, live interaction so we could talk about what the other is or more specifically what your roles are. But this is good to know just for me to have a background. So first of all, what is a personal brand? There are many definitions out there. There's a lot of opinions around it. So mine is just one of the many and I've developed this based on my own experience working with clients and students over the years. I like to define it as a concise and compelling way of communicating who you are and what you have to offer to your target audience. So each part of that is crucial to personal branding. Other ways to think about personal branding is it's your public image, it's what people see and know about you. It's an expectation of experience. And I love this because if you think about other brands, corporate brands, every time you buy something with a certain logo on it, you have certain expectations. It could be in um, internal unspoken expectations, but we, we have them never nevertheless. And so every time people meet you, get to know you, see you again later, they start to build expectations about what it will be like to interact with you. Also, personal branding is about managing your active identity within a field. So just like the industries you uh, shared in the poll, we all have certain fields and specialties that we work in, and we want to manage our identity within that field. We don't have to be the best 
in the world or in the state or anything, but we need to know who we are and how we can contribute. Here are a couple of examples of really strong and positive personal brands. So most people know Ellen DeGeneres as a funny, kind talk show host, and she's always giving away things and dancing and helping people have fun and, and listening to people's stories. Um, and Obama, whether you believe in his policies or not, he comes across as a genuinely pretty good guy, a family guy, a guy who tries to do the best according to his own conscience. And we know them, we have expectations of what it'll be like when they come to the podium or come on screen. So we want to be able to have our own personal brands be stronger than they already are. And we'll talk about how to do all those today. Here's some truths about personal branding. You already have a brand, you always have. It's just by being a person, just by being a living human being, or even after you pass away, you'll still have a brand. It's what people know you as. And you are only as good as your reputation. That, that sounds kind of harsh, but it doesn't matter how good we are at something, it's how people, how good people think we are. And so we can manage that, we have control over that somewhat. If you don't manage your brand, it probably won't get you where you want to go in life. It'll just be haphazard. Things won't really connect or make sense together. So we want to be aware of it and manage it. Also, your brand evolves with you. It's not something that stays stagnant and you feel like you're stuck to once you establish it. Just like us as human beings, we evolve over time. We learn new things. We gain new experiences. We have change in goals. And it's okay to tweak our brand as we go, as long as the essence of who we are stays pretty constant. So some people use the word personal brand or professional brand. Um, I This is how I like to differentiate it. So I think it really depends on your audience. So your personal brand is your whole self. It's who you are to your family, your friends, who know you the best, and also to strangers who walk by you in the store, uh, ring up your drink at the cafe. It's it's who you are in general when you're not necessarily trying to impress anybody. But your professional brand is your targeted self towards your target audience. So it's recruiters. If you're looking for a job or other opportunities, it's your supervisors that you currently work for, your colleagues that you work with, clients if you're serving um, others directly. So, you know, in education, you also think about students as clients in a way, or parents. And in social services, you definitely have clients and health, business. So your per professional brand is a, the part of your personal brand that you aim towards the professional audience you have. So I would like to give you guys 90 seconds to write in the first box of the worksheet who your target audiences are. It could be types of people, it could be specific people's names, uh, whatever you are trying, whoever you're trying to speak to. So I'll put on some background music and give you 90 seconds. Okay, we'll come back to Gershwin in a bit. That was Rhapsody in Blue. 
uh, one of my favorites. All right, so moving on, here's another way of assessing your own brand is taking inventory, taking stock of who you already are. First, you want to look at your traits, which is your personality traits, how you describe yourself, how other people would describe you. And these are traits that are pretty consistent no matter your setting. So for example, one of my traits is I'm extremely curious. I always want to be learning and asking questions. And then you want to take stock of your values. So what are important things to you? What helps you make decisions? What do you prioritize in life? How do you manage your life based on your values? Your passions are things that get you excited. They motivate you to work and to learn and to thrive in life. What are those things that you are really excited and passionate about? Also think about your strengths. So this is things that you are better at than the average person, or maybe just the things that you yourself are the best at doing. And then your goals are just things you're striving for, whether professionally or personally, what are you hoping to achieve in the future? That often determines what we are working on now. So I'm gonna give you some time to work to write your own self-inventory. And here's just some examples of my self-inventory to get your ideas flowing. Now I'll turn the music back on and let you write for another 60 to 90 seconds. Okay, so there's another 90 seconds. Hopefully you got some ideas going. This takes much longer than two minutes, but it's just to help you start thinking in that direction. And you definitely wanna spend more time on it later as you start designing your brand more intentionally. So next we come to personal mission statements, which is a really powerful way of branding yourself, both internally and externally. So I was first inspired to write a personal mission statement as an undergrad student at Brigham Young University, I heard of BYU's mission statement as a university. And the essence of it is to assist individuals in their quest for perfection and eternal life. So if you didn't know, BYU is a religious university headed by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And when I read this, I was just so in awe that this this university has such a big vision for us as students and also the faculty and staff on campus. So I thought, what if I wrote something like that for my own life? That everything I do comes back to the mission, is trying to achieve this mission. We have many programs on campus, classes, clubs, events, and the university is very intentional about striving for, for this mission with whatever it does. And if it doesn't uh, work towards the mission, then it's 
it doesn't do it. So I came up with this personal mission statement that has been edited once since 2010, and I added some parts to it. But currently it is this, to inspire and empower others to discover and fulfill their potential and add greater meaning to their lives by advancing their education and careers. So it's a bit long, but I really condensed it as much as I could. That all of these words in here are important to me in what really drives me in life. And it's also the personal mission statement for, the mission statement, I should say, for launched by Linda, my side career coaching business. Reasons for writing, spending the time, because it really takes a lot of time and thinking and introspection, going through drafts to come up with a personal mission statement. And these are some benefits. First, it expresses your core values and beliefs in a concise way and helps you to be able to articulate that quickly. And you want to write something that will that you can memorize, that you can recall and be inspired by, especially in times of stress or confusion. Second, it helps you focus your energy and resources and help make you help make better decisions. So when you have a lot of options in front of you, when you want to do a billion things, you can ask yourself, does this meet my personal mission statement? And if not, maybe I shouldn't do it because your mission statement also articulates what success looks like to you. It's a very individual thing. So for me, success uh, could look like several different things, empowering others, inspiring others, helping them work towards their potential or add greater meaning to their lives, helping them advance their careers or education. And so there's lots of ways I could feel successful, but that's specific to figure out what it is for you. Uh, lastly, it helps you match with organizations that have similar values and beliefs. So this is especially helpful when you're job searching and looking at different companies and organizations. Maybe you like the job title, but once you go to the interview, you start hearing about what's important to them and their vision, their mission, and you realize this is not a good fit. And I could work there, I could do a good job, but ultimately it, it will feel uncomfortable if the values directly uh, great against your own it's kind of like like i say wearing a really tight sweater you, you could wear it but it's going to be uncomfortable so knowing your own personal mission statement and then matching that against organizations you're thinking of working for then it will really help you know like will this be a good long-term partnership investment so ways to write a personal mission statement, these are some ideas. You don't have to do these in order, but I would suggest identifying themes of past successes. So think through your life. What, are, what were the times that you felt the most successful, the most proud, and, and then think of several stories and how what they have in common. What do they say about you and what makes you feel good? And try to pull out those themes. And then you can also go back to the, your values list from the previous exercise and narrow them down to five, less than five, fewer than five, uh, because having too many values all at once, it's, it's hard to prioritize things. So limit it to fewer than five, and then identify goals you have in life, things that you want to achieve before you leave this earth, and what you want to be doing throughout your life to achieve that or throughout your life. It doesn't have to be an end point, but maybe something you want to achieve along the way. Uh, then you can brainstorm keywords. So in the box on the worksheet where it says personal mission statement, you can just start writing words that you feel like are important to you. So for me, potential is important to me, helping, my, uh, helping others and helping myself to reach fullest potential. And then, uh, think, and then you can think of connecting words after that, like to and, you know, just those connecting words. But think of your keywords first. And then as you, as you draft your personal mission statement, you want to sleep on it, maybe have your closest uh, friends or family look at it and ask them, does this fit me? Do you think this captures what I'm trying to achieve in life? And, and then sleep on it again, draft it again, and then get to a point where you feel like, yes, this is, this is it. I can live with this and I can live by this. So here's some examples. Uh, Denise Morrison is the CEO of Campbell Soup, or at least she was when, I, when she said this as her first mission statement, to serve as a leader, live a balanced life, and apply ethical principles to make a significant difference. 
So I think that's a really great mission statement because it can be applied in any setting, not just her job. Obviously in her job, she's a leader, but at home, she could try to be a leader, live a balanced life, be ethical, make a difference. She can also do that in her community, in her church, amongst her friends. A, a successful, effective mission statement is one where, that you can apply in any setting, whether you're working full time or not. Maybe you're taking a break to take care of family or after you retire, it's something you can still work towards. So Rich, uh, Sir Richard Branson is a serial entrepreneur. If you don't know him, he's started so many companies and he's just uh, is a really easygoing guy, always laughing, always having fun, which makes sense if you read his mission statement. It's to have fun in my journey through life and learn from my mistakes. Super simple. He lives it really well. And Oprah, she's probably the most famous of uh, these examples. And we know her as a talk show host, actress, producer, She's won a ton of awards. She's very wealthy. She's also very well liked by the general public. But this is how she sees herself in her life. She says her mission is to be a teacher, to be known for inspiring my students to be more than they thought they could be. So obviously she doesn't, she doesn't work in a school or a university, but she sees her audience as her students and she strives to inspire them, which I think is really cool. So now uh, you'll take another 90-ish seconds and start just drafting keywords for your personal brand. You can go through uh, these steps right here. Look at your values, your past successes, future goals, and just start drafting one. I recommend a mission statement that's one sentence so it's easy to remember and you can say it to yourself. You can recall it quickly. Okay, so I'll start the clock and the music again for another 90 seconds. Okay, we're gonna move on. So next is basically your elevator pitch. And this is something that you should start writing down first. So ways to introduce yourself in a concise way when you're meeting new people. And we all do this all the time, whether it's at work or at a social function or even a family barbecue, meeting new people, introducing ourselves. But when you're thinking of your target audience, what do you want to what do you want them to know about you? Uh, so think of highlights, things that stick out to you, things that have been formative in your life that you want others to know about you from your past, present, and future. So some examples from my own life, I would say my degrees. So I have a bachelor's in American studies and minor in modern dance. And then I got a master's in psychological counseling. After that, I was a career counselor and academic advisor before I came to my current position as 
career director and student development instructor at Brigham Young University. And I also have been career coaching through Launch by Linda for eight years. In the future, I would love to become a certified strengths coach and present at NCDA, which is the National Career Development Association Conference, and also get another master's in adult education and lifelong learning. So those are some ways that I would introduce myself, things that might be interesting to my target audience. So take another sec few seconds to write your own elevator pitch, uh, thinking for, of your past, present, and future. Okay, so hopefully you got some good points written down. Next, we'll talk about thing, attributes, traits of ourselves that we are, that we are not, and that we're working on. So I've done this thing called a personal branding survey since I was in eighth grade. I didn't call it that, that back then, but I basically didn't, been doing the same thing, which is to ask my friends and family and just people I know to describe me in five words. And then in the last year, last time I did it, I put them all in a worksheet um, and figured out what were the most commonly given words about me, just to know how people see me, what are the most prominent traits that stick out. And then compare that against my own traits that I would describe myself with. And then I think about things that I'm not, and it's okay to, to not be some things, right? You don't have to be everything to everyone. And these are some things that I'm just not. So to be authentic to myself, I, I need to know that and live by that and be open with that. So I'm not, for example, a daredevil. I don't, I don't seek dangerous, adventurous things just to pump my adrenaline. I'm also not monodisciplined. I like to think for many different disciplines because that's what American studies was. I took English classes, history classes, religion, music, sociology, um, lots of history, but also poli sci and econ. So I like to think about things from different disciplines. Um, and so those are just some examples, but there are also things that I'm working towards. So these are things that I wouldn't necessarily describe myself as, but I'm always trying to be more of it. So I would love to work on my punctuality and be on time to everything, which basically means being early. And I would like to be more present. Um, I tend to be very future thinking, and sometimes I'm busy planning and not pr present. So these are important things to know about ourselves as we manage our brands and know who we are, who we're not, and who we're trying to be. So take some time again to write on the worksheet or your own paper your aspirations. What are you trying to be more of? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so uh, your personal brand doesn't have to be perfect, right? We're all human beings, we make mistakes, we have flaws, but there are things that we can continually strive for to improve ourselves and our personal brand. Um, as for the survey, the personal branding survey, there's lots of ways to do this. I've done this in many different ways. I first started with a notebook in eighth grade and passed it around to all my friends and had them describe me in five words, sign their name next to it. Uh, and then after that, I would just text people. So I just uh, copy and paste the same text. Please describe me in five words. Try and understand how people perceive me and collect those answers, put it in a spreadsheet of some sort. Um, and then also you could do it anonymously through a Google survey. You can create a really simple survey and post the link on social media and or text it to people or email it to people to get all sorts of responses. And I think it's really effective to do it with everyone, not just people who know you really well, right? But people who you just met last week, people that you haven't seen in years, but what do they remember about you? How do they perceive your brand? And it's really interesting to see and compare how people in different areas of your life view you. Maybe your family and friends see you as goofy and silly, but your students see you as stern <laughs> or, or any combination of traits. So, I would encourage you to do that and the, the higher the number the better you know collecting more data and and then doing this kind of analysis on on the responses like how do people see me at, and maybe what are the traits that i would describe myself as but don't come up in the responses and how do i bridge that gap and help people to see me in a way that i see myself it's kind of fun all right, so ways to strengthen your brand. Once you've done all this work and you uh, and spend more time on it outside of this webinar, I would encourage you to create your niche and be really good at it. So that's what the upper right hand image represents. It's you're, you're just taking a piece of your industry and then, and then intentionally focusing your professional development efforts on that, reading articles, reading books, uh, listening to podcasts, going to conferences, talking to other experts, and just really building your skills and knowledge in your niche. Because the thing is, you don't have to be everything to everyone. That's not what a strong brand is. Strong uh, personal brands and corporate brands, they pick a niche and then they get really good at it. They become known for that. And that's what we want to do with our own brands. And then we also can build, cultivate brand ambassadors. These are people who are on your side, who believe in your work, have seen you do well, and want to tell others about it. So uh, as, you, as you do your work day to day and meet different people, um, hopefully you, your services and competence comes across so positively that your target audience will help spread the message about you. And you don't wanna do that too forcefully. You just wanna do good at your job and become really, um, well known for your niche and that way people will naturally become your brand ambassador so the way we cultivate brand ambassadors is to become really good at what we do all right here's a little cool thing that i discovered as i was coming up with this presentation over the years is that we take our brand with us wherever we go we have our personal brand it's a part of us it can't be separated from us and everywhere we work or um, travel to, we bring our brand with us. And this is a representation of some of the places I've worked from my last year of my undergrad at BYU to where I am now. So United Way was my first full-time job after college. And then I moved to DC for a couple of years, worked administrative jobs at GW, George Washington University. And then I came to Columbia to get my master's and also worked on campus in several different roles before I moved back to Utah to BYU and back to the office I worked for as an undergrad student in the Multicultural Student Services Office and have now uh, come to Career Services. 
So I have brought the, my strengths, my traits, my passions, my goals and values to each one of these organizations. And in return, everything I done, all the places I've been have become a part of my brand as your background has become your part of your brand, right? It's shaped who I am and it's, added to my personal brand the things i've learned at each job are now a part of me and i will bring that to my future jobs so this is a representation of a very simplified representation of each of us within bigger brands so it's not only the organization we work for the school or the hospital or the clinic but also uh it's we're, we're all alumni or i guess some of us are alumni of tc Right, so we're part of the TC brand. TC is part of our brand. Um, we're also part of our family brands. So whatever family you come from, if you have in-laws, we become a part of uh, our in-laws brand. And then they have become a part of us. So ask yourself, what unique contributions do you bring to the, the, the bigger brand that you're part of? Um, and it doesn't have to be something that is the best in the world, but what unique things do you bring that are maybe different than what all the other people are bringing. So, for example, uh, I at, at BYU, it's not super diverse ethnically, and I'm Chinese American, so I brought that perspective. And when I went to TC, I brought the Mormon perspective. There were not very many Mormons uh, in the university, and I represented that. So I came with that unique worldview. Now take some time and write some things that you feel like you bring that add to your organization brand or your family brand or your community brand or your church brand. Okay, uh, I apologize for the, any background noise you may be hearing, very thin walls here. <laughs> um, okay, so now we move to the four fronts of personal branding. Your brand is everywhere. And the main four fronts that I wanna talk about are in person, online, on paper, and in memory. So we'll go over each of those in detail. That's the second page of the worksheet that you can download. And this part is about rating yourself. How professional or unprofessional are you in each of these categories? And, and then after all, um, all of those and rating yourself, you can see which do you wanna work on first? Where, need, like where needs the most attention and where can you dedicate your efforts to? So in person involves a lot of things, right? It's how you meet people, how you shake hands, do you give eye contact? Uh, what do you look like? So this is your clothes and how you groom yourself, your posture. And when you speak, what is your voice tone like? Are you like really soft or really loud? Or do you talk really fast? And that all conveys different things. So be aware of how you sound when you speak. And then your elevator pitch is what we wrote out before the past, present, future and how you introduce yourself in a, in a brief way. 
Of course, in, in interviews, our personal brand is really important in how we represent ourselves, speak about our background, our skills and experience, and how we come across to recruiters. Also think of how you are in meetings. Do you speak up when you speak up? What kind of things do you say? Do you command attention? And how can you improve that? So no matter what your brand is, in person you should appear pretty confident. And this is not to mean you should be cocky or think you're better than anyone, but that you know who you are, you know what you have to offer, and you are secure in that. You're self-assured, you don't need anyone to validate you, uh, you're just who you are and you're, and you're okay with that, you're proud of it. We also wanna appear comp competent, so that we are well-trained, we have the skills necessary to do our roles well. We wanna be respectful to others who may be different from us, have different ideas, um, and not have any kind of hard feelings towards anyone or, or treat anyone unfairly. We want to be approachable um, because that's how people get to know us, is we get to share our brand in person. And if we come off as a little on guard or defensive, we may not be seen as approachable. We also want to be dependable. And that basically means doing what we say we will do, following up on, on our promises and making sure that we follow through and follow up on our tasks so that if someone hears that we'll do something, they can depend on us to do that. On paper is pretty simple. It's basically your resume and cover letter, which are not even always on paper nowadays. They may be just electronic files, but how we write and express ourselves. Um, also your business card, if you have a business card or you've made your own for your own organization or company, you want it to be, you want to have consistent headers, at least for your resume and cover letter. Um, basically create your own stationary header on your documents and then make sure you're clean, uh, you have clean formatting, that it's easy to read and it's organized well, the font's readable. And make sure you proofread like crazy because it's really easy to have mistakes that we overlook because we've edited the document so many times. So have other people look at it and clean up all the typos. Here's just uh, examples of my documents. So mainly I wanted you to notice that the header should always be the same and consistent on all your documents. All right, third is online. And I included these stats because they are motivating <laughs> to clean up our online brands. So 90% of recruiters um, that we you know, apply to will research candidates online. If they see an application, a resume, cover letter that they like, the next thing they'll do is go online and Google your name. And you wanna be able to control what people see about you online. And uh, also 70% of recruiters have rejected candidates based on what they found online. Something that's unprofessional, that doesn't represent themselves well. So first of all is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is crucial. Hopefully you're all on LinkedIn. If not, you should really get on it because it, we have full control on LinkedIn of how people perceive us, of what we get to display about ourselves and really manage that. It's, it's basically a built-in platform of, for personal branding. How we write our emails is important. How we communicate with others. Are we kind? Are we dependable? Are we respectable, respectful and competent? Um, and making sure that's consistent, consistent throughout our emails. Social media is um, anything besides LinkedIn online. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Reddit, other things that you might use to communicate with others online. Make sure that your privacy settings are where they should be so that embarrassing and professional things don't come up. And it's not like we have to be completely transparent, but we do want to manage what is public. On websites, so this is referring to your own website, if you have one, or if you're on the website of your organization. So if you're on you know, your school website or your company website, do you have the same consistent name? So for example, some people include their middle initials, some people include their middle name, 
Some people uh, just use a nickname that's not their full legal name, like Matt instead of Matthew. And you just wanna make sure that's consistent. Whatever, whatever it is, make it the same across the board so people don't get confused and think that it's two different people when it's just one. Your bio should be updated whenever you have anything new in your life. When you leave a position, when you finish a degree, when you start a new position, make sure that your bio online is updated. So I, one small tip is to not say how many years you've been doing something, but just say what year you started. So for me, instead of saying I've been doing Launch by Linda for eight years, I can say I started it in 2011. So then people can do their own math and it, the bio won't become outdated as easily. Uh, another thing is images. So I recommend having one headshot that you use for all your online images and not have any other outdated images online. So I just got a new headshot this past summer for work and I've been updating it on LinkedIn, my, in my emails and social media and website. So make sure you do that. Because the important things about having an online brand is to make sure it's updated. It is, it is um, current and that it's consistent across the board, like I said, that it's professional. So again, remember your target audience, audiences and how they want, how you want them to perceive you. You also want to be authentic and true to yourself and not try to be anyone you're not. And lastly, relevant to your target audience. So for example, I do a lot of things. I love a lot of things that are not on my LinkedIn or on my resume because it's superfluous, it's distracting, and it doesn't really help people feel more trust or confidence in me as a career counselor if they know that I play the piano. It doesn't really add anything, it just kind of distracts. So try to keep it relevant to your target audience. Here's an example of my LinkedIn. So one really important thing, I think, for personal branding is your headline on LinkedIn, which is the, the line underneath your name. That's the other thing that people see. So they see your name, your picture, and your headline before they click on your profile. And instead of just having your job title, I recommend having two to four sets of nouns to describe yourself as a brand because you're much more than your job title. So I do have my job title on here, but I'm also career coach for Launch by Linda. Um, another way I could do my headline is higher education slash career development slash personal branding. Those are the things that I really care about that I've been working towards. So here's some examples from students who have changed their headlines after I taught them this principle. They're from all sorts of majors. So one cool thing you can do is put what you're working towards. So you see Carly is, was seeking editing opportunities in New York City. She was very expl explicit about that and aimed her efforts towards job searching in New York City and she, she got a job in editing. Um, also, let's see, Joshua wants to be a future engineer and that's what he's working on. Gregory is aspiring to be a community influencer. So if you are actively working towards something, wanting to make a career change, then put that. Okay, lastly is in memory. And this is your brand when you leave the room, which will last much longer than the time that you're in the room, right? So it's how people see you and how people see themselves. Uh, this also involves emotions. It's not just intellectual, but I want people to feel about me that I care that I'm a caring person. I care about them and their success. I want them to feel that I was attentive to them and a good active listener, that I really heard them because everyone's deepest desire is to be heard and understood. And that's important to me as a career counselor and career coach. Also, I want them to feel that I'm trustworthy, that I can um, listen to their insecurities without judging them, that I can keep secrets. And then I also want them to feel that I'm competent, that I'm good at my job, that they can trust me to be good at my job. Also, I want students and clients to feel certain things about themselves after a session with me. I want them to be calmer than when they came in. 
career searching, or sorry, career development and job searching can be very stressful, ridden with emotions. So I want them to feel calmer afterwards. I also want them to feel more informed and learn things that they didn't know before they came in. I want them to feel empowered about themselves and that they can achieve what they want in life. And lastly, I want them to be hopeful. If it feels like, oh man, I've been trying things for so long and nothing's working, after they meet with me, I want them to have some hope for the future. All right, to wrap things up, all good brands should be this. So you each have your individual unique brands, but overall, all of our brands should be authentic to ourselves. So like I said, don't try to be someone you're not. They should be cohesive and bringing the parts of ourselves that make sense for the brand that we want to express. They want, we want our brands to be relevant to our target audience. So again, pull out the information that is going to be most helpful to who we want to reach. We want our brands to be compelling, as in different and stick out and interesting from others in the field. We want to be trustworthy. So this is like honesty and ethics. We have to be really uh, honest in our work and and obviously stay legal in everything we do, not try to cut corners, um, not try to not try to underdo anything, and we want to make sure that we're following the rules. Also, we want to be consistent on all front, all four fronts of personal branding in person, online, on paper, and in memory. So that wraps it up. Here's my information if you want to reach out to me. I would love to talk about personal branding. I also do coaching sessions on personal branding um, through, you can email me, you can go to my website and read more about my business or um, look me up on LinkedIn. So now we have a few minutes for questions, I think. Yes. Um, thank you, Linda. And if you have some questions, feel free to send them into the questions panel and then I will um, go through them. So our first question, Linda, is you were speaking earlier about the self inventory and their traits, values, passions, strengths and goals. Can you elaborate a little bit more about the values port? Yes. Yeah, so values, uh, there's so many different kinds of values we can have. I, I think an easy way to do it was to literally Google values, personal values, and then, and then take a big list, print it out and cross off all the ones that are not important to us. Um, values are usually nouns. So it could be things like independence or creativity or uh, compassion. So things that lead, lead us in our efforts as we make decisions in life. So for example, if an opportunity comes up that is going to limit my independence, I'm not going to do that. That's not, um, if, it, if it hinders what's important to me, then I can make a clear decision like, no, that's not part of my brand. Does that help? Yes, that's great. Um, so we have another question that's also kind of asking for you to reiterate um, the in memory part. How do you do this when you're a seasoned person at the job, but the others are new? So if you're a seasoned person at the job, but the others are new. Okay, so in memory is basically how people think of you when you're not there, when, when they're not looking at your documents or looking at you in person or hearing you talk, but it's just when they think of you. So so if I met with someone last month um, and I try to remember them, I, I'll remember certain things like, oh, they were a really good listener. I feel like they were really paying attention to me or they were not, they were distracted. I don't know if I wanna to talk to that person again. So it kind of is linked to the expectation of an experience, like your next experience with a certain person. Okay, great. So the next question is, um, how do we, um, regarding approachability, as someone of a dif different ethnicity or um, gender or um, or race or um, things like that, 
how do I can be how am I able to perceive myself to be more approachable by people who are not the same member of my ethnic group or race or um, sure. background religiously and things like that? Yeah, it really doesn't have to do with what we look like. It's more of how we hold ourselves. So to imp improve, increase our approachability, it's very simple things like smiling and giving eye contact, saying hi to people when you pass by them in the hall, um, and just appearing like a nice person. And and it's easier to do that if you if you genuinely try to think of each person in a loving way, like appreciate the uniqueness of each uh, each person that you meet and you'll start to exude more approachability or at least better greater approachability okay great thank you um the next question is how can i age proof my resume while including important job experiences age proof your resume okay so if you're if you're a more mature uh, employee worker out there and you feel like you have to compete against a lot more younger people um, it's you do bring unique traits so that's why it's important to think about your unique contributions you you bring a lot more experience you bring not just work experience but life experience and you need to think of all of the all the strengths you have rather than apologize for things you don't have but for the things that you don't have if they are skills that are attainable through additional classes or courses, then then go out and update your skills because that's the main concern for employers is people who are older may not be as tech savvy or know how to use um, certain technology. And so really uh, working on updating that while focusing on your strengths and being confident in all the experience you bring will help you improve your brand. Fantastic. So the next question we have is, um, if we're struggling to locate a job that we think would be a good fit for ourselves, then uh -huh. how do I know if I found a job that rena ren um with me, even if their values are not identical to mine? Yeah, so that really uh, comes out in interviews as you as you go to interviews um, and ask them questions about what is the what is the work culture like here? What would be the a typical day in this role? What are the challenges that I would be facing if I if I accepted this offer? And asking detailed questions to understand what you'd be doing because sometimes you can enjoy your job, your specific role and what you do day to day, even if it's in an organization that is not completely aligned with your values. But the more they align, the better, right? And you can you can still learn about companies uh, before you start interviewing for them by trying to network with people who already work there, finding them on LinkedIn and asking if you could schedule a 15 minute call to get to know their company, get to know the culture there, the opportunities there, what kind of people thrive there and what kind of people tend to have a hard time. So I think that's a good question. One, one of the questions you could ask is what kind of people thrive in this role or would thrive in this role? All right, fantastic. Um, so I just want to be mindful of the time. It is 101. I know that we have a couple more questions in the um, queue, but um, I know that it's also one. So yes, Linda's email is on the slide right now. Please feel free to jot it down and email her those questions that you have if we were not able to get to your question. Um, before we end, Linda, I just want to tell you thank you so much for taking the time to share your expertise with the TC community. A video of this presentation will be available on our website, um, www tc.edu slash alumni slash career webinars. And if you are joining us, we will be sending out this link once it's live. Um, please feel free to visit our website for more information about our monthly webinars and upcoming events. We hope you can join us for our next webinar, which is called The Teaching Secrets of the Best Leaders on December 11th with alumnus Rashawn Richards and Stephen J. Valentine. Thank you all so much for joining us, and we hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you Bye. so much. Please feel free to reach out. Take care.